Hello, hello to all. Here today in the Tier 8 British Premium Aircraft Carrier, the Indomitable, the recently, re re recently released addition around Christmas time to the British Aircraft Carrier line. We're here today on the map Shatter and the mode is Domination. Now the Indomitable is of course the second uh, British premium aircraft carrier offering and is the counterpart to the Implacable, her half-sister, at tier 8. Now today we find ourselves bottom tier in 8 to 10 matchmaking, so this should be a bit of a tricky one, but over the course of the next few games, hopefully we'll be able to give a good showing on this uh, formidable, if limited, aircraft carrier. Now first off, starting off, we're going to launch the Indomitable's attack planes. These are the Havland Sea Hornets, a twin engine uh, fighter bomber of sorts. They are incredibly tanky for rocket planes at 2300, matching that of the Implacable's Sea Fire attack planes. However, unlike the Sea Fire's rather sluggish speed, they can accelerate up to an incredible 234 knots using the boost consume engine cooling uh, bar. Now starting off, we're looking for some destroyers. We do bump into a smallest cover with our 2x3 setup. So that's identical to the Implacable Sea Fires with her 2x3 setup. So that's three attack waves of two planes each. Now each plane, as you can see, carries eight rockets for a total of 16 rockets in an attack wave. I'll compare this to the Sea Fires 10 rockets per wave and you're missing a couple. The rockets also hit a little less hard, 2100 as opposed to the 2300 of the Sea um, fires on the implacable, but otherwise they share the same 27 millimeters of penetration and 9% uh, base fire chance with Demolition Expert. Now, unlike the Sea fires, which are exceptionally slow, but also because of that slow speed can turn fairly well, these actually turn fairly poorly. Now, I was unable to find a destroyer, but I did That's find a lone good. hipper, which is perfectly valid target for me to hit early on in a match. Hit him with 7 rockets for an unambitious uh, 5k damage and set of fire. He launches a fighter, but fighters you will find are not so much of a problem. Now we do find the Z-23. I lose 2 aircraft in the exchange, which is not great. The regeneration times on this carrier are not fantastic. But we do secure one of the locations of the destroyer, and given the hipper has launched his self-defense fighter, I am going to try and make a pass. Now you'll note the reticle is quite large, even at maximum narrowing in. It doesn't get that small. Six rockets for about 3k. Gonna relaunch the rockets. Now you'll note that the attack planes reserves are larger, 14 as opposed to 10 on the HEDBs, but we'll get to the HEDBs when we get there. Now note that when I was making my pass on a Z-23 after I spotted him, I didn't immediately start turning. This is of course due to the rather large turning circle of the Indomitable herself. In terms of her aircraft, the the Halvin C Hornet, in spite of having this incredible 234 knot burst speed, has pretty horrific turning circle in terms of how well her planes turn. And so as a result, uh, does make very wide passes, similar in some ways to the torpedo bombers and dive bombers of the Graf Zeppelin before her, the other aircraft carrier with incredibly fast planes. Now, can't quite figure out where the Z-23 is, so I don't want to spend too much time searching, so I'm just going to make another swooping pass on this hipper and get some defended ribbons. Shimikaze torpedoes gliding past on the screen, as you can see. Looks like they might have been shipping 20s. Lose another aircraft on the way in, but thanks to that 2300 hit point pool of each to help and see Hornet, again showing off that exceptionally wide arcing turn, I am going to uh, make another hit onto that hipper. Pretty wide spray, but this time I get what I'm looking for a fire, which will prompt me to launch the other squadron. Note how the Indomitable is also unique in having only two types of attack planes in ordnance carrying. Now the level bomber is typical of most British aircraft carriers, so unlike the Arc Royal, the tier 6 premium for example, with her accelerated drop speeds and tiny penetration, this is a more typical uh, British level bomber. 
They are the same 250 pound general purpose bombs as those found on the Implacable, dealing 4700 alpha with 32% base fire chance, 33% with a fire flag that I have mounted in this case. However, uh, these planes are quite a bit tankier with the health module. Unlike the Implacable's 2600 or so, they reach a astonishing uh, 2999, so just shy of 3k which allows you to make plenty of turns like this. I have red health on that one plane, but just only just now did I land or lose the aircraft. In addition, you can see the reticle is much smaller than the Implacables, about half the size in fact, which leads to uh, being able to get focused bombs onto the target. I'm gonna leave that hipper to limp away. He's gone close enough to that allied AA that I don't really want to deal with him anymore. Now. Each plane in this 2x2 two two setup, as you note this 4 plane squadron, accelerates up to a speed of just shy of the fighters, 222 in this case. I'm gonna slingshot this Massachusetts by the way, so we'll just watch the immunity time frame. And each plane carries 6 bombs, he has launched a fighter. Now, note that short cooldown after the slingshot, which allows you to do shit like this. Now, even now, though he is a fighter, because I only have the two aircraft, the bomber cannot possibly arm on my squadron. As a result, set of fire, my planes glide into orbit with their enormous hit point pools, having lost only one aircraft to the relatively heavy firepower, or AA firepower, of the Massachusetts. Each plane only carries six bombs, as I'm repeating for the third time. Sorry, I keep not finishing my thought, but... Uh, the Implacable, on the other hand, carries a 2x3 setup, which carries 8 bombs per plane. However, with the halved size of the reticle, and the reduced refresh time, I can make repeated runs with due to my high-speed aircraft of 222 knots. You can see me chunking out that Massachusetts over and over without too many losses. So even though we're launching, what is it, 4 less bombs? 12 as opposed to 16, the half size of the reticle means my accuracy and thus fire chance with these level bombers ends up being much improved. Now in addition to all these rather standard features, I'm much closer this time so I'm going to slingshot without boosting. The note that the Indomitable does start out with 4 charges of the fighter plane consumable instead of the typical three. This is, of course, to make up for the fact that she only has two attack squadrons. I'm gonna relight those fires, another 9k, two fires. This Massachusetts, I'm sure, is having fun being firebombed by me. But note that you cannot do this to every battleship in the game. This Vladivostok that you can see right beside him, for example, is much thornier of a target. These bombs, like those found on the Implac, are GP bombs and thus only have 32mm of penetration, unlike the 41mm found on that, those of the audacious level bombers. As such, 40mm plate and 50mm plate found on Russians and Germans, I forgot the slingshot here, so I'm gonna have the manual, uh, can be extremely potent. So, we flubbed her drop, but he died anyway, which is fine. We're going to go after a different atypical target here. You can see that Graf Zeppelin in the distance, and that is indeed my intended target. I'm going to make sure my hull is safe. Now, I am going to slingshot this. Remember, these planes do 222 knots, which means they are extremely fast, so even under the effects of an interceptor, such as the self-defense fighter of this Graf Zeppelin, I am able to dodge quite easily and just de-arm it by having my planes climb into the sky against an enemy flat top as he takes eight bombs from the 12, you can deal exceptionally heavy, heavy damage. I'm gonna push in, you can see that Cyclone starting to kick in as Snowflakes hit my screen. On the other side, the enemy has secured that cap from my allies, but I'm gonna deal with this Vladivostok first. So against an unarmored flat top, the enemy carrier, you saw these bombs deal exceptional damage. This, of course, works on everyone except yourself and the Implacable, because the British carriers are, of course, armored carriers. Note this drop against the Vladivostok, how I only did 2,000 damage, 2 penetrations, and 6 shatters. 
suddenly against this heavier armor you can see an immediate and marked decrease in damage so if you imagine a kremlin with her 60 millimeter plates well let's just say you won't be dealing a lot of damage his kuznetsov does pop so i'm not going to set a fire for sure but this cyclone is going to temporarily protect me and i'm pretty sure he is uh, larger concerns. Just gonna launch with the rocket planes because I can't be bothered to use the level bombers at this range. Now, level bomb. The rockets only have 27 millimeters of penetration, which means I must hit that super structure over there that I aimed at. Finally, hopefully we can secure this cap. I'm gonna push in and look for that last destroyer. I know he's covered by the gearings icon right now, but there is one last Z23 that was last spotted around here. So inside of the cyclone, I am going to hunt for him. Spotted at the edge. So he's somewhere in this range. Now, no one's going to be able to help me and shoot him, but. He's probably going back towards his team. Yep, there we go. Now, these rockets are better to approach from the side on, but failing that, approaching from the rear is acceptable. Going to drop a fighter if only to keep him lit. He's smoking. Which is fine by me. If he smokes in the middle of nowhere, he's basically dead already. I expect it to be the Hipper or the Graf Zeppelin inside that central B cap. So, oh, these are going to be overlit by a little bit. You can see the spray on the rockets is not great, unlike the rather precise Spitfire bombers or Spitfire attack airplanes. These have a rather wider spray, and as such, against destroyers, are not particularly effective. Gonna see what I can find in here. Looks like the Graf Zeppelin was going for here, so if it is him, he's about to have a fun time. You can see the hipper over there. He's passed over there to join that hipper. So I'm gonna move out in a way. And then probably slingshot in. You can see that Hipper has a fighter. Need to make sure not to over accelerate, but I also have to make a turn inside of the slingshot, so. As a result, racing against that attack plane did not beat it, unfortunately, but only two aircraft. I still have six out of ten aircraft, so still fairly healthy. That the Grav Zeppelin's about to bump into a small end, so I anticipate him being rather unhappy about his fortunes. Or misfortunes, shall I say. I expect to see fish in the water. The Smolensk, of course, does have 8km torpedoes, but he may not bother. Although, given the potency of Graf Zeppelin's secondaries, perhaps he is regretting his decisions now. It's not at a great angle for me. You can see basically the worst possible angle for level bombers, in fact, but I will drop them anyway. He does get dispatched by the Smolensk, but I'm going to fly onto the Hipper using this mountain as cover. Enemy Smolensk in the area as well. Oh, fuck, miss. But you can see, even with red health aircraft against the light AA of the Hipper, I'm still fairly tanky. This game should be elementary. The Cyclone's just extending the game at this point. Just cruising around, just shy of six digits. Wouldn't like to get to six digits. But can't always get what you want. I'm gonna demonstrate the turning. You can see that sluggish turning circle. Quick to arm, however, so. Hopefully, I can get a hit onto the hipper. Bringing the planes around is gonna be the hard part. Jamming down on the air brakes to try and get a tight as possible turn. I'm inside Smolensk AA, but thankfully, my planes are fairly durable. Still do lose one. This might be a bit under lead. You can see they still have a fair bit of hang time. And a straddle with only six bombs. You really need both bombers to get a good hit off. My rocket planes, on the other hand, have, re have recovered somewhat. Up to 12 out of 14 aircraft. Six in the squadron, eight on the ship. So. Or 14, sorry. So I'm missing only two. So I've recovered most of my reserves. Now, rocket planes are not ideal, but you do what you have to do. Swan has smoked up, and the Ismo is sadly providing uh, friendly spotting, so I am going to take a, a fire. 
as a result, gonna go for the superstructure. However, the Ismo is notably a ship without extensive superstructure, and as a result, I only score four pens and seven shatters. The fire, however, is useful. He has damage control, and I still have three aircraft in the squadron, which will be trimmed down to two by the time I touch him again. But with the 10 second Japanese battleship damage control, hoping to just time that out and score another hit and maybe try to relight a fire. No luck on the fire. Another two penetrations and nine shatters. So we'll go after him with the level bombers. Now the level bombers also not ideal. Only 32 millimeters of penetration, as I have iterated, and Ismo has a 57 millimeter middle deck, which means you're going to see you're about to see a lot of shatters. Thankfully, he has firing gloom, so I can still spot him even as he's about to glide into the smoke. My allies dispatch the Smolensk. Bombs rake the superstructure and score a double fire. You can see. Thanks to the extremely high turnaround speed, my squadrons have already returned to my carrier. And as a result, I am able to quickly take off another full squadron, leaving just the Massachusetts. Should be taking a double fire from me. Let's see if we can make it a triple. Because, oh baby, a triple is a funny meme. Lead him just about at the center of the ship to try and get that rare deck fire. No luck, however. So we're going to glide out in a way, let my allies finish him. He's surrounded, so quite clearly going to die. And let's hunt for that Massachusetts who has gone to the border. Detection on British planes, of course, is unremarkable. Apparently he's in the exact same spot. So this should be an inauspicious beginning of his burning saga. Burning Crusade, perhaps you could say, for you World of Warcraft players out there. As you can see, with just one bomber and six bombs, and a pretty poor angle, the accuracy is not great. You really want the density of both bombers to try and effectively light fires. Cyclone is lifting, so my allies are going to start firing on him, so I cannot guarantee that I'm going to be effective. Looks like the Z-23 is right on top of me, based on the fact that my hull is detected. And the hull itself quite stealthy at 11.8. This is with just concealment expert on my captain, but not on my modules in terms of concealment module. Very few carriers take concealment module. Uh, basically only the Kaga that I can think of, although the Shokaku does have it as an option, as well as the Hakuryu. Basically just the Japanese ones, I guess you could say. But the Indomitable is kind of like a American Saipan, and if you know anything about the Saipan, with her tiny, tiny reserves, well, you really want to take those extra deck space slots. Score a rocket attack onto the Z-23. Timer's ticking out, but I expect that we're going to be able to kill him. I did not make a wide enough turn, as you can see, so I all just barely got my rockets off to into arming time. So as a result, he escapes relatively unscathed. He's turning up and north anticipating that turn, so I have to take a much wider turn with these aircraft thanks to that horrific turning circle. Now, if I wanted to, I could have dropped a fighter, still have plenty left, but I want this kill for myself, which is why I left it dark, so I could come clean up that kill myself, assuming their shells missed the target, which they didn't. So hooray for me. So, performance-wise, 128,000 damage, 80 bomb hits of the 80, 50 were penetrations, and about 30 were shatters of some sort. 3 incaps, 1 kill, 13 fires, not even that ambitious to be honest, 2 defender ribbons, 15 spotting ribbons, and 61 rocket hits. Of the rocket hits, about a third shattered. Team score-wise, top of the scoreboard at 1850. Note, I was bottom tier, but I did not harass top tier ships that much. You'll see a tier 8, tier 8, tier 9, tier 8, tier 8, tier 8, tier 8. So as a result, my base experience is not as high as it could be. If we break down the damage distribution, note 58,000 raw bomb damage, a lot of which came from that first Massachusetts that we really, really bullied. Since he got fire into fire into damage control into double fire, so he was not having a good time, as you can see from that 26,000 fire damage. 
And then Rockets, 23,000. These will typically play a relatively small role. Unfortunately, there are a lot of them on the deck, so you do have to make use of them when the bombers aren't cooldown. And 47,000 fires. Now, this thing does print witherers, so 47,000 isn't even that impressive, but I failed to get my fires to stick on one of the heavier battleships like this Ismo. Like the Ismo, I did stick a double fire, but he was in the midst of all my allies, so he quickly was brought down before I could get full burn time. Nevertheless, heading back into port, I'll take a look at the modules and captain build before we potentially head off into another game. We'll see if time allows. So, the Indomitable is a illustrious class armored aircraft carrier, the last sister of the illustrious herself, and so the fourth of the class built of the four. She differs from her sisters, victorious and formidable, in that she has an extended lower hangar deck, so she has a greater plane capacity. In World of Warships, however, she's pictured in her uh, post-war setup. She did not, in fact, carry to the Havilland Sea Hornet at all during the war. In her service, uh, these planes were only ready after the war, so as a result, she's in a somewhat modernized air group setup. You can see from her silhouette, she's very similar to the Implacable. In fact, if I hover over the Implacable here, you see the shape is almost identical. This is, of course, because the Implacable is a subclass of the Illustrious, a further add-on or modernization, which also further increased the hangar deck space. Anyhow, module-wise, I'm running the exact same module setup as the Implacable. So slot 1, aircraft modification 1. Slot 2, aircraft engines modification 1. Slot 3, I'm running attack aircraft modification 1. So this gives five or two extra seconds to the attack planes in case you want to arm the attack planes out fairly distant and then bring them in onto the target. Uh, you'll note though, however, as I mentioned in the match, that the reticle for the attack planes is relatively poor. Uh, you're shooting less rockets than the Implacable's sea fires, but at the same time, the reticle is larger, which tends to lead to more spray and less accuracy against light targets. This is obviously not ideal when of the 24 aircraft you carry on deck, 14 of them, or 16 of them are... Is it 16? Sorry, I'm still fairly fresh to this. Yeah, 14 of them. 14 of them are still these rocket attack planes. But the extra aim time sometimes helps you get a narrower reticle. If you opt to decide that this is not very helpful to you, then you can take AA guns modification to help defend yourself against aircraft a little better. Although I believe this is changing on PTS. It's changing to a sectoring bonus, and if you know anything about pilot and carriers, it's very hard to make use of your sector in the vast majority of situations. So we'll see. And then your secondaries are trash, don't bother with them. So choose between those two. Uh, slot 4, Bomber's health is a no-brainer. Bombers are your primary source of damage, as I demonstrated. 50k raw bomb damage, and most of the fires are from the bombs as well, so take improved bomb health. This pushes your aircraft to almost 3k health, so definitely a fantastic upgrade. And last but not least, uh, note your base concealment with concealment expert on your captain is already quite good, bring you down to 11.8, very serviceable. Uh, if I compare, a the implacable without concealment expert on her captain does 14.5 with CE, she'd just be about... so 1.45, shave that off, so 1.4, so she'd be 12.1, so still a little bit better than your tech tree sister. So take flight control modification 1 and get the extra two deck spaces to push to 14 and 10 in, your, in terms of your squadrons instead of 12 and 8, which is absolutely anemic. The restoration time obviously also helps. Even with all the restoration modules and captain skills I have right now, there's a 10% off, 5% here, and 5% from a captain skill. I'm still sitting at 106 seconds, which is incredibly long. If you compare the implacable, which also has unimpressive Regen times, you'll see, very similar. Although the torpedo bombers are 88 here with that full build and 89 on the sea fires, so longer than the implacable. And if I compare it to something relatively short, like the Shokaku, I don't have an Enterprise to show off, that would be even more impressive, but a Shokaku has fairly short regen times 60 seconds on the rockets, 65 on the torpedo bombers, and 69 on the dive bombers. So compared to the Shokaku, for example, you're sitting at an extra 40 or so seconds per plane, so taking regen time is very, very valuable. 
Now, as I mentioned, like the Implacable, the Indomitable is an armored carrier, one of only two at tier 8. That is herself and her tech tree sister. So if we look at the armor scheme, we can see this impressive armor. We'll look at the deck first and then the hull. Deck-wise, 25mm extremities, so forward and F25. This shatters actually more HE than you would think. Basically, all destroyer HE is going to shatter against this. Uh, and it does shatter 155, so 155 and 152mm guns if they don't have IFHE. As you head into the middle armored outer deck, you have 38mm extremities. So 38 is uh, identical to the middle deck found on American battleships, and as such, it shatters 203 millimeter HE, so that's 8 inches. So any of the 8 inch heavy cruisers are going to shatter their high explosive against this armored deck. As well, you shatter basically all rockets from all rocket planes, except for Tiny Tims. So, except for those of the Saipan and the Tiny Tim equipped Lexington, you shatter all other rockets at your tier. Oh, and the Graf Zeppelin, sorry, for getting her 40mm penetration rockets. Uh, notably, this also shatters your own level bombers, which uh, level bombers GP bombs because they only have 32mm of penetration. But if you find yourself in a weird double carrier 810 game, which is rare but can happen, uh, do note the Audacious, but for 41mm of penetration, still will penetrate this part of your deck. And last but not least, the true armored strip in the middle of the flight deck is 76 millimeters, which resists essentially all high explosive and all aircraft ordnance in terms of bombs and rockets. Tiny Tims have 67, this is 76, and uh, Midway bombs, which are higher than Lexington bombs, have 63 millimeters. So this shatters basically all forms of high explosive damage outside of a uh, British battleship high explosive. In addition, this 38mm section and 76mm section are thick enough that they can shatter most armor-piercing shells, or ricochet most armor-piercing shells, including those of the Yamato with her 32mm overmatch, as long as you're at a range where the shells have enough time to get to a rather shallow arc. On the sides of the ship, you have a 21mm section forward and aft, and a 19mm section in the middle. This is slightly different from her sister, the Implacable, which otherwise shares the same deck layout, you will note. 25, 38, 76. In that the Implacable has 19 on the outward sections and 21 in the center section. So the important margins for 21 is that 21 shatters destroyer HE, and 19 does not. Most destroyers are covered in 19mm, and most, as a result, most destroyer HE is able to pen up to 20 millimeters, but not 21. So your outward sections on the Indomitable will be resistant, but this larger central section will take damage. This is usually where people aim for. This is different from the Implacable, where the extremities are vulnerable with 19 and 19, but the midsection is 21. So the Implacable is somewhat more resistant against destroyers compared to you. Last but not least, of course, we have the lower waterline belt, 21. So also destroyer resistant, but does, is not going to resist any kind of cruiser HE and a main belt of 114. Now underneath the main belt, if I strip away the armor of the deck, you'll note the raised citadel with the stepped citadel. The citadel itself is covered in very, very overmatchable plates. So you see 21 and 19 at the extremities and has this raised section of only 25 as well. So battleships can and will punch you in the face if they catch you off guard. So getting caught broadside against a battleship, in spite of being an armored carrier, is highly inadvisable. Unless you're at a fair distance, where you can try and bounce shells off your deck, you're gonna take pen damage and this thing will explode, let me tell you, if you get shot at by a battleship. So don't broadside, stay angled. Your armored fight deck protects you against enemy carriers and destroyers, but not against cruisers or battleships. So enough on that, let's head over to the aircraft. Now I only have two squadrons to compare. I'm going to compare mainly to the Implacable, but also to the Saipan, since those are your closest analogs. So the the Havland Sea Hornet rocket attack craft, you can see them at the stationed at the rear of the aircraft. They differ from the level bombers a little bit in that you can see they have those uh, rocket racks as opposed to the bomb racks. They have 2300 HP, and as I said, they cruise at 234 knots, which is obviously an incredibly high speed. 
They each carry 8 rockets, 2100 damage, 27 millimeters of penetration, and 10.5% fire chance. And have a restoration time of 104 seconds. Compare that to the implacable. And you will note that the Sea Hornet, or Sea Fires at the back here, share that healthy 2300 hit point pool, but are extremely slow in comparison. 50 knots slower at 180 knots. So effectively, that 50 knot difference, 230 versus 50, is roughly a difference of 30 to 40 percent. So you have 30 to 40 percent more effective health than these Sea Fires. The Sea Fires shoot a heavier, slightly heavier, different rocket, 2300 but have identical fire chance and penetration. The difference in fire chance, of course, is caused by the fact that I'm mounting one fire flag in terms of signal flags. With the reserve of only 14, these are, of course, tiny, tiny aircraft, so try to take care of them. Uh, you do have to make use of them, but as I said, they definitely have their shortcomings. The bombers, on the other hand, are rather impressive at uh, 3,000 health. But before I continue there, I will also take a look at the Saipan, which is the other uh, low-capacity, high-quality aircraft carrier. So now do note that as an American carrier, this the indomitable, the Saipan, sorry, has access to Ovechkin with the improved survivability experts, so his planes are a bit tankier than they would otherwise be. But with the upcoming Captain Andrew Cunningham, you can get improved uh, aircraft armor, so you can kind of match that. But anyway, matching up against that, we have the F-8F Bearcat. Now these are a bit squishier, you'll note, only 1900 health, however, they do almost match the Indomitable's aircraft speed at 221 knots, and unlike the Indomitable's rocket attack craft, the Bearcat is an extremely maneuverable aircraft, it's able to make very, very tight turns, unlike the wide turning circle of the De Havilland Sea Hornet. So effectively, uh, though the Bearcat is squishier, it is a more effective delivery platform, with comparable speed but uh, more responsive controls, and a better reticle, I would say, even though I don't really like the Tiny Tim reticle. Uh, in terms of munitions, the Tiny Tim, the Bearcat also, on the Saipan, also has a 2x3 setup, and launches 6 rockets per pass, as opposed to your, uh, what was it, 16. However, these are Tiny Tim rockets with 68 millimeters of penetration, so unlike your rockets with 27 millimeters, where you have to be very picky, with your where you hit on a ship, Tiny Tim's basically only have to contact a ship, and as long as it doesn't hit belt armor or turret armor, you're gonna deal damage. And they have a whopping HE Alpha of 5400 and 34% fire chance. So obviously the Bearcats are extremely powerful. In exchange, however, they have an even longer region time of 111 seconds, and the Saipan only carries 11 as opposed to your 14. So all in all, I would say the Bearcat's a slightly superior aircraft. Uh, in terms of raw aircraft, the munitions obviously very superior. So inferior rocket planes to the Saipan, and less flexible rocket planes in the Saipan, but that is the uh, price you pay for having that extra 400 points of health and the 10 knots of speed. Level bomber-wise, the indomitable level bombers are also using the Havilland Sea Hornet, and they're comparable to the Implacable. However, they differ in several key areas. As I mentioned, they're much, much faster, 222 knots. Now, speed is very important when it's a damage over time based aircraft. These are fire setting bombers, so you want to de you want to go attack someone, set some fires, force their damage control, and then follow up with a secondary attack. Uh, once that damage control has been burned to set some permanent fires. So speed is definitely highly critical, and at 222 knots, the indomitable far outclasses the 169 knots fully boosted of the implacable. Do note as well, the implacable's bombers, even when upgraded with the health module, only have 2600 HP, so with an extra 50 knots and an extra uh, 300 or so health points, this ends up being an extra give or take 40%-ish effective health, which is obviously a big deal when you only have 10 of these aircraft. The bombs are identical, 250 pound general purpose bombs with 4700 alpha and 32 millimeters of penetration and 32 millimeters of, or 32% fire chance. However, the Havilland Hornet, 
or C when it only drops six bombs per plane. With the two by two setup, that is uh, what's it called twelve bombs per pass as opposed to the eight on the spearfish of the implacable. Now, uh, as as you saw throughout the commentary, the size of the reticle, however, on the indomitable makes a big difference. It's about half the size. Uh, I would say the indomitable's level bomber reticle is about the size, the length of half the indomitable herself. Whereas if you use the implacable, her level bomber reticle is essentially the the length of the entire ship. So even though you're dropping uh, four less bombs, so 25% less bombs when compared to the implacable. You have a reticle half the size, so you end up with greater accuracy, which is uh, important when it comes to getting those bombs to land, especially on more maneuverable targets. So as a result, you end up with a more effective bomber. Now, the bombers are a 2x2 setup as opposed to the 2x3 setup of the implacable, and this does have some key differences. Uh, you'll note that I was frequently slingshotting and making just one single pass with the Indomitable level bombers, and then using the incredible speed of her bombers to follow up with a second attack. That's what she's kind of forced to do thanks to the poor turning circle of the de Havilland Sea Hornet and the tiny tiny reserve size, or a t squadron attack size. Basically what happens is that if you go with a full four planes on a medium to heavy AA ship, you'll make your first attack and it'll be fine. But as you're trying to make that turn and come around to relight fires, thanks to that poor, horrible turning circle and the almost too fast speed in that situation of the De Havilland Sea Hornet, uh, usually you're, you'll lose at least one aircraft, if not both aircraft, if you try to turn around. So it's better just to attack with only two aircraft and come back instead. The Implacable, on the other hand, with her six plane squadron, is able to make her first initial attack pass, set some fires, and then use her slow speed but much far superior turning circle to turn around and burn through two planes worth of HP. That's an extra of, what is it, 5,000 HP buffer. And hopefully survive with her last two aircraft, finish her turn, and come back in for one follow-up attack so that if they burn their damage control on the first pass, you will hopefully set some permanent fires that way. So in terms of playstyle, they differ uh, somewhat in that aspect. I covered maneuverability, I covered concealment, so the last thing about the hull is the maneuverability. She has 30 knots, has a pretty good turning circle for a carrier, and a pretty good torpedo bulge for a carrier as well. Far superior to something like a uh, Lexington or especially a Saipan at this tier. Saipan is a cruiser hull, so she has something like 6% torpedo protection, if that, 4%, even worse. So do note that the Indomitable is a true carrier, unlike the light carrier of the Saipan, and thus Thus, uh, has the benefits of true carrier health, true carrier torpedo bulge, and true carrier anti-aircraft defenses. With full range auras, with a uh, pretty significant AA damage, 228 on her mid-range and 300 or 228 on her short. Okay, I'm trolling. Sorry, 228 on her mid-range, which is her bulk aura, using her 40 millimeter Bofors mounts, and her short range makes up the uh, most potent range because of her her vast array of 20 millimeter Orlicans, as you can see here. I believe those are 20 mils. And then some more 20 mil nests at the bow, 20 mil nests at the bow, her dual purpose main battery, 40 mil nests, 20 mil, 20 mil, 40 mil nests. These are boat, uh, pom poms. So her A is overall quite excellent, although since most of it is concentrated into short range, it is a self defense aura. Now, that's indomitable. Last but not least, of course, we'll go over the captain build. This is, of course, my audacious captain, you'll note, so it's not a perfect captain for the uh, indomitable, since it, this captain is using torpedo acceleration, and the indomitable, of course, does not have a torpedo bomber whatsoever, so these two points are wasted, but otherwise, it's very similar. So, captain build-wise, you're going to do a modified basic 9, pick your aircraft servicing, as I mentioned, pretty long restoration time, so servicing is very important. Then go for plane speed for your first two-pointer. Uh, adding 2.5% to an already high number is obviously very beneficial thanks to mul multi multiplicative stacking. Sorry, that word is not 
particularly easy for me to pronounce. Then go for probably survivability expert first, I would say, and then follow up of aircraft armor, and that will form your core nine skills. After that, definitely go for demolition expert. This is by far one of the biggest boosts you can get to your fire starting capability. It adds 5% fire chance to each bomb, so without it, you're sitting at a 27% fire chance and 1% to each rocket, so without that you're sitting at 9% fire chance per rocket, and uh, when you're firing 16 rockets, this is effectively like adding 16-ish percent to your fire chance of rockets. Of course, the math doesn't actually work out that way, so don't please don't flame me, math majors, but in essence, it's a very large multiplication, especially when you're adding 5% per bomb and you're dropping 12 bombs. After you take those skills, uh, then I'd probably feel free to take last gasp. At this point, you're sitting at 13 points. After which, you can either go for concealment expert immediately, although I don't think it's particularly necessary if you're doing only indomitable. But if this captain is for the audacious, then you're going to want CE because the audacious definitely needs it. It has an enormous 15-ish kilometer concealment without it. And then you're going to have two points left over, unlike me, because you're going to be building a captain for the indomitable, in which case uh, they're very easy. Take improved engine boost to get 10% boost time. Boosting is very important to the indomitable. And last but not least, uh, direction center for fighters, which will allow both your self-defense fighter and your combat air patrol fighter launched from your attack squadrons to have an extra aircraft. Anyhow, this review is a bit belated. I did not get my hands on the Indomitable as soon as I would have liked. Uh, so RIP any view farming in terms of release Indomitable for me. But I'm quite happy with the Indomitable overall. Still learning the ropes, but as you saw, uh, the high speed and high durability of that of her aircraft allow her to pick her targets, so even without torpedo bombers, and even though she is missing an alpha weapon, she is still quite capable. So just keep calm, stack fires, avoid heavy AA targets, and you will be able to succeed just fine with the Indomitable. Like the Graf Zeppelin before her, she offers a unique playstyle amongst premium aircraft carriers, and does actually differ significantly from her tech tree sister Implacable. So if you're looking for something fresh and you enjoy the level bombers of British aircraft carriers, uh, I can heartily recommend the Indomitable to you. Tier 8 carriers make tons of money, and they are quite fun if you enjoy carriers. Now, if I would compare this to the Ark Royal, tier for tier, I think the Ark Royal is the better overall package. The Ark Royal borders on overpowered. But that's a story for another day. She definitely holds her own. Anyhow, that was my Arc Royal review, or sorry, not Arc Royal, but Indomitable review. And I'll hope to follow up soon with some more Indomitable gameplay. Cheers.